Hi everyone, welcome to Travel Tutorials from My Happy Suitcase. In today's session, we're going to talk about your day out. So you've already arrived at your destination, you've had your breakfast, you're ready to head out for the day. Um, what do you take with you? So I thought I'd run through kind of a useful list of things that I always make sure that I have in my day bag, as well as a couple of my favorite bags that I use for day travel. Um, I'll just put it out there as a disclaimer, I am not endorsed by any of these products. These are just my personal favorites and my opinions of what I like to use. Um, so first let's start with the bag itself. Um, different people like to have different things. Um, I like to really have one bag. I don't like to travel with more than one bag, so I think about the kinds of activities I'm going to be doing and take the most appropriate bag with me. Um, so we'll start with a few options. First is um, this little backpack by Longchamp. I'm a huge fan of Longchamp bags because they all fold up to next to nothing. So you can pack this away in your suitcase just like this, and then when you get to your destination, you unfold it and you have a nice little backpack. Um, fits lots of stuff. Um, it's nice and secure. It has the zipper plus the snap, um, so you don't have to feel quite as leery about walking around with something on your back. Um, but I also understand, you know, certainly in busy tourist seasons, you may not walk around, want to walk around with something on your back like this. Um, you always want to make sure that when you're getting on subways or buses or you're in crowds, you kind of move it to the front just to keep it safe. Um, but this is one great pack, carries lots of stuff. Some other bags that I like are by a company called Haiku. Um, so they have a few different kinds. I've used this one quite a lot. This is a great bag. You can adjust the length, cross body, lots of pockets, zippers. Um, you can really do well to kind of hide your belongings, so you can tuck your money way inside, so the chances of any kind of pickpocketing are pretty slim because they have to go through several layers to get there. Um, also nice and big, can carry everything you need in a day, um, and it's pretty good in the rain too. It's not waterproof, but it does roll off pretty well. This is another bag I admit haven't had a chance to use it once yet. Um, this one's by Sherpani. Um, the appealing thing about this bag especially is it is RFID protected. So what does that mean? Um, if you have your credit cards in your uh, backpack, purse, whatever, uh, people if they have a reader can actually steal your credit card information, believe it or not. These bags are made to protect that so the RFID can't penetrate the bag. Another nice feature I really like about this bag is so the zipper has this little latch on the other side so you flip it over and no one can actually unzip your bag. So it gives you a great little extra layer of protection, um, especially if you're in crowds, you don't have to worry about someone being able to get into your bag. There are also some versions of this bag, mine is not one of them, um, that has a little loop that lets you secure it to uh, the back of a chair. So if you are you know, sitting down for a bite to eat, you can actually physically attach the bag to a chair so someone can't take it away. Uh, this bag, this is another one of my favorites, especially if you're going to somewhere maybe that has a more damp climate. So these bags, they're by a company called Sophia and Matt um, in the UK. And they also have lots of inside pockets, adjustable strap, but they're made with this coated plastic um, that just lets any kind of moisture run right off. And they come in really, really fun different fabrics and patterns. And then my final day pack that I like to travel with, and this is really more from going someplace where I might be doing some outdoor adventuring activities, hiking, that sort of thing. Um, it's these packs. Now, Ella Bean and Eddie Bauer um, both, both make these types of packs. There are also other companies. My husband has one from Kathmandu, which is a, a great outdoor company in New Zealand. Um, but these are wonderful. They're really lightweight. Again, lots of pockets. But they fold up inside of themselves. So again, much like with the Longchamp backpack, you can fold this up next to nothing inside the in interior pocket here and it just goes inside of itself. It takes up almost no space in your suitcase and then when you get where you are or need to be, you undo it and you got yourself a really nice day pack um, for the day. So those are the ones that I uh, typically use and again depending on where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be doing on my trip, you know, I'll take the appropriate bag. The other thing you want to be thinking about ahead of time is what do you want to keep in your bag every day? It might sound like a silly thing to be talking about, um, but you'd be surprised how many times you find yourself in a situation where you really could use something that would have been really simple to just have in your bag. So aside from some of the basic things that everybody puts in your bag, like you know sunscreen, sunglasses, your wallet, obviously, um, uh, you know, these are some ideas of um, some things that you might not necessarily think of carrying uh, that I always make sure I have in my day bag. 
Um, so first thing is a package of wipes. Um, I always have a package of wipes. You know, you're in a city, you're in subways, you're touching surfaces that are probably not the cleanest. Um, you know, you're in crowds. Uh, I always have a package of wipes with me and I make sure that anytime I've been in one of those situations whip one of these out. They're also really handy if you happen to sit down say at an outdoor cafe and the table's not quite so clean, you can wipe it down. So big fan of having a, a pack of, of wipes with me. Um, Band-aids. I can't tell you how many times I've been on a trip uh, and my shoes, I might have worn them a hundred times before but this one time I get a blister. So band-aids. Always make sure you have some band-aids with me. Again, take up no space whatsoever power bank. Um, you know, we all have cell phones and there's nothing worse than being out and your phone battery dies. Whether it's because you don't know how to get back to where you were or you just can't take pictures anymore. Um, so I always have a phone bank in my uh, purse and I make sure that I charge it up every night um, when I go to bed. Collapsible water bottle. You can get these at most outdoor shops. Um, these are fantastic. You can see, it takes up absolutely no space when it's empty. But you can fill it up, stick it in your bag, or most of them have a little carabiner, you can hang it off the side of your bag. It saves you so much money in bottled water. Um, when you're traveling, especially in popular tourist locations, and if you are in kind of the heart of the tourist location, you're going to be spending two, three, four dollars for a tiny bottle of water. Um, you can spend a lot of money on bottled water in a short period of time. So I always fill it up at my hotel or my B&B before I leave in the morning. Um, typically, you can also find other places. Lots of cities are now having filling stations. You know, they're trying to discourage uh, disposable bottles, so you'll find filling stations. Um, some restaurants will even fill it up for you, so if you're stopping for lunch, you can ask them if they fill it up. Um, but it's a great way of making sure that, number one, you always have water when you need it, but two, it saves you a fortune in, in water bottles. Shopping bags. Um, so bring your own shopping bag is, is has become much more popular in the U.S. Um, has been around uh, in Europe especially for quite a while and you have to pay for a shopping bag if you don't have your own. So I usually have about two of these little collapsible ones that I can pull out at any time and use them whenever I'm in a shop. Um, even some department stores are charging for shopping bags now so it's not just about when you go to the grocery store. Um, so I would definitely make sure you have a couple of these. Um, you can get them online. Um, your grocery store at home probably sells these as well. I got this one at CVS. Um, but I do always make sure I have a couple of these so that I have something to carry around my shopping. Uh, you might laugh at this, but a notebook. <laughs> so in this very technical age when everything's electronic, um, I still like to carry a notebook. I'll write down, you know, if there's something I saw that I want to look up later, or there's a place that I saw that I want to go back to, uh, a street name that I want to remember for the next time I'm in that same location. Um, it might be the name of a wine, or it might be the name of a dish. Um, obviously, you can certainly take pictures with your phone, um, but I do like to write some things down. Um, the other thing I'll do is before I go anywhere, especially if they're a non-English speaking country, I will find out some basic travel phrases, you know, hello, goodbye, where is the bathroom, um, how much does this cost, uh, my name is, you know, some of those basic phrases just to try to help you, uh, you know, embrace the culture a bit more and be able to communicate a little bit easier. So I'll write those down in my notebook and I'll actually spell them out phonetically so that I know how it's supposed to be pronounced versus necessarily how it's spelled. Um, so then I always have that to refer to. Um, so it's just a nice little way to keep on hand some of those important things that I want to make sure I try to use on an everyday basis. Um, you might laugh at this one too, but I like to keep a little crossword puzzle book with me. And you know, maybe you're a Sudoku fan, maybe you like word searches, um, but there's lots of times when you're on a train or a subway, or you might even be sitting at a cafe, um, and you kind of just want something to do. So I love these little pocket crossword books. Um, they just give me a little something to do, you know, especially if I'm uh, like on a train, you know, one or two hour train journey, uh, and I want to do something besides just stare out the window. In terms of um, your passport, it's, there's pros and cons to carrying your passport with you. Um, I'll do, on another video, there's a, a, a discussion around um, VAT and getting your tax back. And in a lot of places, you have to have your passport on you in order to qualify for that VAT. So if it's a shopping day, you may choose to take your passport with you. If it's a non-shopping day, I would encourage you to leave it in the safe in the hotel room. Um, you know, this is pretty treasured, so you don't necessarily want to be taking it with you everywhere. 
Um, one alternative is you could also just make a copy of the photo page of your passport. I encourage you to do this anyway um, and either have it somewhere secure electronically or keep that copy separated somewhere from the rest of your, um, your personal effects. Um, it's a good practice, number one, if something should happen to your passport and gets lost, you have a copy and you can go to the American Embassy and it can be processed a bit quicker. Um, but in some cases, some vendors will actually let you use the copy, because all they really need is the passport number and the expiration date in order to be able to process your VAT transaction. So uh, you may choose to just take a photocopy with you instead. And then the last thing, now this isn't necessarily something I keep in my day bag, it might be, but it's something I always have in my luggage. Always, always, always. Um, bubble wrap. <laughs> now, you might think that's a strange thing to travel with. I, everyone who knows me knows I always travel with bubble wrap, and there's a couple of reasons. Number one, I do like wine and gin, and I do like to try kind of other liqueurs and um, alcoholic beverages from other countries. I love to taste, you know, what's the local flavor. And there have been a number of times in doing that, I found a bottle of something that I just can't get in the United States. Um, I was in Poland and there's this bison grass vodka that's just amazing. And you couldn't get it in the United States. So I took some home with me. You can't carry it on, because remember, three ounces. So you can't carry on that bottle of wine or bottle of gin or whatever the case may be, so you have to put it in your suitcase. That also then has its problems because, you know, subject to breakage. So you can get these great water, um, sorry, wine bottle size, liquor bottle size bags. Um, they have a, a closed Ziploc top, and then they've got the bubble wrap inside, so you just slip the bottle in there, close it up. I do still kind of wrap it um, with a couple layers of clothes just to be safe, uh, but these things work great. Um, if you don't have these, um, you can also travel just with sheets of bubble wrap. I actually usually travel with both. I have my bottle bags because I'm pretty sure there's going to be something that I try that I'm going to want to take home. Um, but I also will just travel with sheets and bubble wrap, just in case. Uh, my niece collects snow globes, so I always try to bring her a snow globe when I travel. But believe it or not, snow globes break the three ounces um, or, or more rule, unless it's a tiny snow globe. So you don't want to get that beautiful snow globe, put it in your carry-on bag, and have it can't confiscated by security at the airport. Um, but again, you also don't want it to break in your luggage. So I carry a few sheets of just you know, varying sizes of bubble wrap, so if I buy something, that uh, I just want to make sure I can wrap up uh, in my suitcase to make sure it doesn't break, that I can't take in my carry-on bag, um, then I have the ability to do that. It doesn't really take up much space. You can usually stick it in random pockets in your suitcase or even inside your, your backpack and that sort of things, but um, it can actually make the trip home a whole lot easier for you. All right, so I hope you found some useful tips in some of the things I talked about today. For more tips and information, you can watch other videos on this YouTube channel or visit myhappysuitcase.com. Thanks for watching.